Okay, so if you understand some basic principles about square roots, well, you should be able to solve this problem without using a calculator. All right, so we have the square root of 1,000, and uh, what we want to do is uh, simplify this square root. So in other words, we want to come up with another expression that is equivalent to the square root of 1,000, and we don't want to use our calculator. All right, so if you think you know the answer, go ahead and put that into the comment section. I'm going to show you the correct solution in just one second. Then, of course, I'm going to review these very important uh, concepts about square roots. But uh, let's go ahead and take a look at the answer. Again, the square root of 1,000 is equal to what? Well, the correct answer is 10 times the square root of 10. All right, so if you got this, well, you're definitely going to get a happy face and an A+. Plus. And if you're like, oh, Mr. U2 Math Man, what's going on here? Uh, you know, I know what a square root is, like the square root of 16 is 4. But uh, when it comes to the square root of 1,000, how could you possibly get this? Well, this is actually not that difficult. Matter of fact, uh, let's go ahead and get started right now. Really, the key to doing this problem is knowing uh, two things, all right? One, you need to know a property of radicals and square roots. And this is the one here that we're going to need to use. This is not that difficult, but basically, this is what it says. So when we take the square root of a number, obviously a number like 1,000, what you want to do is look to see if you can factor that number. So if you have two factors, and let's just kind of give you a simple um, version of this. So if I have the square root of 4, factors of 4 would be 2 times 2. So that would be 2 times 2, like so. So 2 times 2 are factors of 4. So this A and B is uh, are factors of a larger number. But if you have a number and, uh, and you have its factors, now you can have more than two factors. The main idea is that you could split those square roots apart like this. So in this example, the square root of 2, we can actually write this as the square root of 2 times the square root of 2. Okay, so you could write it that way. However, it's not advantageous to do that. You're better off doing it this way. But basically, just so you understand how this property works, um, you know, this is key again to be able to do this problem. Now, this is only one of several properties you need to know about square roots and radicals. By the way, if you're studying this and need additional help with this, I teach this in my algebra, uh, algebra one course and algebra two course. I also have additional videos on my YouTube channel that can help you out with this. But uh, let's go ahead and continue on. Uh, so we're going to need to know uh, this property to do this problem. And then you're going to want to know something about what we call perfect square factors. So remember, we're going to be looking to factor this number 1,000. But when we're factoring a number that we're trying to simplify in terms of a square root, we want to be especially on the lookout for these numbers here. They're called perfect squares. So let's take a look at uh, some examples of perfect squares. So 4, 9, 16, 25, 36, and this goes on and on and on. These are what we call perfect square factors because when we take the square roots of these, the square root of 4 is 2, the square root of 9 is 3, the square root of 16 is 4, and so forth. In other words, we can find the square root of these lovely numbers here without the aid of a calculator. Okay, so let's go ahead and put this all together. And so here we have the square root of 1,000. So again, we're going to be using uh, this property here. We're going to want to factor this uh, 1,000. And we're going to want to factor. There's a lot of different ways you can factor 1,000. But when we factor this, we want to be thinking about perfect squares. And you can see here, 1,000, when we factor it, we could factor it this way, 100 times 10. So 100 is a nice, big, perfect square factor because the square root of 100, hopefully you know, is 10. Okay, so 10 times 10 is 100. But the main idea here is that we can write 1,000 as, um, as the product of these two factors, 100 times 10. Again, now here, 100 is the, um, the largest perfect square factor that can fit into uh, 1,000 here, okay, that we can find. At least uh, I'm pretty sure I am correct when I say that. But nevertheless, here's the thing. You can um, use other perfect square factors, and it would still 
reduced down, your, your final answer still would be the same. So don't get too kind of um, stuck on trying to find the largest perfect square factor. It's convenient to do so, but if you just have a couple perfect square factors, just go with it. And as you work the problem down, you'll still get to the same correct final answer. Now, before we continue on, please consider hitting that subscribe button. This really does help me help as many people as possible on YouTube. Now, my channel is all about trying to make math clear, understandable, and interesting. Also, I'm trying to encourage people that are having a tough time in math to never give up. So if you enjoyed this content, again, hit that subscribe button. And if you're going to do that, hit that bell notification as well so you can get my latest videos. Again, uh, the square root of 1,000 is the same thing as the square root of 100 times 10. These two factors we can split, and this is the key right here. So the square root of 1,000 times, I'm sorry, the square root of uh, 100 times 10 is the same thing as the square root of 100 times the square root of 10. Okay, so now this is where the fun part uh, comes into play. So we have the square root of 100, which of course is 10, and the square root of 10, we could just write like so. So this answer is going to be 10 times the square root of 10. So this would be our final answer, and this is what we would call an exact answer. Okay, so if your teacher said, um, or if you had some sort of test or quiz, and you said, fine, um, uh, simplify the square root of 1,000 into an exact answer. This is what we call an exact answer because the square root of 10 is what we call an irrational number. When you go on your calculator and you take the square root of 10, you're going to get this decimal, but that decimal is what we call uh, an irrational decimal. Basically, it doesn't repeat and it never ends. So to write the entire uh, decimal out, it would take infinity, and you and I do not have that time. So uh, from this point forward, if we take a, um, the square root of 10 on our calculators, we're basically go, going from an exact answer to an approximation. But again, you know, when you're doing problems, you know, word problems, let's say you're doing some geometry problem that deals with area, volume, whatever the case is, oftentimes you do need to get an approximation of a square root. And of course, you want to use your calculator for that. But let's, you know, kind of stick with this basic idea of um, not using our calculator. So how could we get some sort of real basic approximation for the square root of 1,000. So we know it's equal to 10 times the square root of 10, but uh, here's the good part, right? So here's the square root of 10, let's try to get a sense of uh, its actual value. Well, we know what the square root of nine is. So nine is not that far away from 10. The square root of nine is three. And so what's the next number we know? Well, the next number we know would be the square root of 16, right? So the square root of 16 is four, so between nine and 16, there are no uh, uh, other perfect square factors. So when we're trying to kind of estimate the square root of 10, what do you think that's gonna be? It's gonna be 3.5, 3.9. Well, listen, 10 is pretty close to nine, and if the square root of nine is 3.0, maybe the square root of 10 will be like maybe 3.1, 3.2. And actually, if you go into your calculator, it's approximately 3.16. But we could just kind of use common sense to uh, basically get some uh, get a decimal value, so we can start estimating to kind of get um, you know some sort of uh, pretty decent approximation of this final answer. Okay, but when you do this, um, you know you want to use these other values just to kind of gauge off your first you know kind of gauge a first guess because really what we're talking about here is a guess and check method. You take a number. You can square it and see where you're at, and then you kind of just keep adjusting it. So we want to get a decimal, um, you know, approximation as close as we can the first time. So let's just go ahead and go with this three point, let's say the square root of 10. Now the actual approximation, this is pretty close, 3.16. But let's suppose you said, you know what, I think I'm just going to use 3.1. You know, it's a little bit more than this three. That would be pretty good. Not perfect, but pretty good. So what you can have is 10 times the square root of 10. Of course, we simplify this down. And this square root of 10, we're going to call 3.1. We'll just estimate it somewhere in that uh, neighborhood. So 10 times 3.1 is 31. So let's see how close we got. Well, 31 squared, 31 times 31, would be 961. So if you wanted to do this calculation, 
what would this answer tell you? Well, 31 is, you know, it's not quite a thousand. So we would want to add a little bit more to our decimal here, maybe 3.13, 3.14. Of course, as you can uh, continue to you know play around with this, you'll see that 3.16 works pretty well. Okay, so I hope this video helped you out. And if that's the case, don't forget to like and subscribe. Now, if you need additional help in algebra, check out these courses right here. So pre-algebra is uh, for those of you that are studying basic algebra. But uh, if you are further along in mathematics, then you may wanna check out my Algebra 1 or Algebra 2 courses. Now, my Math Skills Rebuilder course is a review course. I cover basic math, algebra, and geometry in this course. I'm going to leave links to all these courses in the description of this video. All right, so with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures. Thank you for your time, and have a great day.